Hi, my name is Benjamin Barson. I'm a composer, a baritone saxophonist, and a eco-socialist political activist. And I've been living in Pittsburgh for two and a half years. I work with Landslide Community Farm located in the Uptown District of Pittsburgh. And we also have our own prefigurative space here called the Dazzling Swamp. Hi, my name is Giselle Sanat Rodriguez, and uh, I'm a singer and also an activist. Um, I work with uh, Landslide Community Farm, and I also moved here two years ago from New York. And uh, we are uh, building uh, self-sustainable communities here. We're trying to learn how to uh, farm in a more conscious, ecological way, and uh, that's what we do. <laughs> Eco-socialism, generally speaking, is the focus on producing ecosystems instead of commodities. So capitalism produces commodities that are disposable, that are meant for consumption, and don't really have an objective beyond um, producing surplus value or you know, increasing capital for the producers of those commodities. Overwhelmingly, um, there's externalities produced by those commodities that have tangible economic and ecological um, consequences but are not internalized in the cost of the commodity. Yeah, it's also the way we integrate, uh, really integrate all humans with nature. You know, how do we relearn how, how to uh, respect Mother Earth, basically, and integrate ourselves because we are so alienated from it. You know, we, we no longer know how to be with nature. You know, I mean, some some um, uh, people all over the world have this knowledge, but we've forgotten in our regular daily lives, daily city lives. You know, so it's basically going back to to, to the roots and relearning uh, how to live together again. So the reason that we chose a graphic novel format to present Truth and Dare. Um, as a comic book curriculum on eco-socialism is because a lot of times when we receive linear or rational information kind of presented in a um, like fact-based or statistic-based way um, there's already kind of built-in parts of our consciousness that are either receptive or block that based on our ideology you know our parents political party that they vote for your relationship to driving a car whatever, there's a sort of built-in belief system that governs where that information is going to be received in your brain, if it's going to go into the active part or the part that you just want to sort of, you know, repress or deny or just reject entirely. But when you see, you know, beautiful artwork that has, you know, scope, depth, imagination, a sense of, you know, multi-millennia, universality, whatever, a sense of awe, the moment that they see something that's beautiful, the ideas there can take on a completely different context in terms of how our brain processes it and receives it. Um, additionally, we think that uh, learning how to live in tune with nature is necessarily a creative act. You know, it's going to require rigorous science and you know using insights that we can only achieve with you know Western instruments. Um, but it's also going to require a deep level of spirituality. Um, it's going to require a renegotiation of values and phenomenology, like how we perceive uh, the world. And that, I think, is something that the medium, like a graphic novel, only can do. Eco-socialism is like a word that expresses a movement that's happening globally that is made up of millions of people. Uh, the Landless Peasants Movement in Brazil, MST is the acronym. Um, is just one of those examples, the Zapatistas in Mexico. And uh, what's happening in Venezuela right now, not at the state level, but in terms of communities that are reorganizing um, to be self-sufficient. And, and it was the first country to ban uh, GMO seeds, just period. You know, not just people in New York, but also, you know, activists, scholars, and musicians in Hawaii and Canada in South America and the Global South. We're hoping to use this space as a base to bring those voices and those um, movements into the conversation in Pittsburgh. We'd like to have a, a series of concerts and public discussions 
on some of the ideas expressed here about um, how to relate ourselves to nature in a future-oriented way, um, a sort of eco-socialist concert series that would be titled From, From Soil to Soul. Even this presidential cycle shows how the crises causing capitalism is really splitting um, the world up into two camps, those who want to exclude and marginalize and build up walls and prevent refugees, climate refugees, economic refugees from living in the future, and those who know that we need to either have a world that works for all of us or none of us. I'm <laughs> sorry.